Hello, I'm Michael Sanders and I'm going to be showing you some oil painting techniques using methods that have been around for hundreds of years. This is what oil painting is all about, being out in the open air and standing in front of the subject, being inspired by nature. And we're on the um, Tavy Valley on Dartmoor. The moors up to the right and the left and the Salmon Leap behind me. Lovely um, pack horse bridge in front of me. And uh, who can fail to be inspired in a spot like this? Marvellous place. I'm going to start mixing up my um, colours now and blocking in a simple tonal sketch to get started. Okay, working out of doors is entirely a different kettle of fish from working in the studio. It means working fast, working in all kinds of conditions, working against the weather as we are doing now, and coping with whatever nature throws at us. So I've used a viewfinder to choose where my um, object, my subject matter, is going to be, the bridge, and I've already decided where I'm placing it on the canvas board. I'm using a canvas board primed with an acrylic gesso tinted with uh, a bluey green and blocking in tones as I'm going. Sun goes in and out, we can't avoid that and we have to work around these elements and use a little bit of memory. We have to work out where the shadows are, put them in and the light obviously will change as the sun goes around and we have to work from the position of the shadows when we started to paint really. Get the shadows and the highlights blocked in and stick with them with a, with a subject like this. I'm using a thin mix of burnt sienna, French ultramarine to give me a nice working grey, blocking in some areas. It's now raining quite heavily and I'm going to continue because I'm working with water compatible oil paint and uh, we're certainly getting plenty of that at the moment. This is going to be an oil sketch rather than a full finished oil painting. I've got a very limited palette at least to start off with. I'm working with titanium white, lemon yellow, cadmium red light, burnt sienna and French ultramarine. I'm mixing a little titanium white into that grey that we use to block in and it gives me a nice starting off colour for the sky which is cloudy, overcast. So we're just going to put that in. It's not the lightest thing uh, in, the, in the image, it's the second lightest thing. The, the lightest thing really is actually the reflection by by inference, it's reflecting underneath the archway, the reflection of the sky appears to me to be lighter than the sky itself. I'm just going to mix a um, touch of ultramarine into this white and I can see we've got a little hint of a blue sky. It's not much sky in this composition anyway, but I'm just going to put a little hint of that in just to remind me that we did actually get a break in the clouds. And into that mix, I'm now going to put a little lemon yellow, which will give me a pale bluish green, which will be my distant field. The moors are about a quarter of a mile away but down here around the valley uh, bottom there are some fields and they're a, a dullish green. I'm going to lay that on and hopefully this will be right first time. It's very challenging working this way, it's great fun because we're actually in front of the subject matter. It gives an immediate impact and you can usually see whether a painting's been painted out of doors in front of the inspiration or worked up afterwards. While I'm, I'm uh, in the background, I'm going to try and get the hazy sort of greyish blue of those winter trees and flick them up so that I'm flicking the colour up into the sky and give the impression of some trees in the distance using the bristles of the brush to show the way the trees are actually shaped. Time really is a factor with this and we have to bear in mind that the light's changing all the time and going for the, the simple look simplifying everything because without that we just wouldn't get it done. Mixing the um, lemon yellow and ultramarine together will give me a range of greens which I can modify with the red to make brown if I want and I'm going to put a little burnt sienna into that mix and block in some of the darker greens behind the, the bridge. These gorse bushes which nicely frame the, the bridge for me giving it a, um, a, some dark contrast in the background. Back to the lemon yellow again.
basically I'm adjusting the tones of the background bearing in mind the bridge partly should be lighter but in underneath the arches it's going to be much darker than the than the fields and so the fields can be fairly light where they're showing through the the bridge there and I'm holding in, in my hand a range of brushes I'm going to change now to a slightly smaller brush which is uh, I've been using a collection of long flats and this is a long flat number six the same one that I used to block in the initial stages with mixing up now a dark greyish colour for underneath the bridge burnt sienna ultramarine a hint of that green that I've just been using the tendency is when working in a in front of a subject like this to try and put in everything try and put in every stone and try and paint every single blade of grass and you can't really so you have to be very careful what goes in and what comes out the underside of the bridge breaks away here into pale colors where the stones are but I'm using a scumbling method to give the impression of stonework not the same thing not the same thing at all and under this little square arch, if that's not a contradiction in terms, under the square opening on the left, the, the field behind is quite bright, quite lit compared to the dark of the archway itself. And I'm careful to put that into perspective. I'm keeping the colours at the moment fairly cool. And then I can warm up and uh, put the highlights in later. Pale greenish grey, it's granite and it's particular to this area of Devon, a greenish coloured granite. This is canvas board and it comes in a white and I always tint it for one very good reason is that um, it gives you more control of your tones. You can actually see where you're going. If you use a white board, a white canvas, often the darks, you put a colour on and it would look very dark compared to the white. So you lighten it too much. And it's not until you've nearly finished the painting you realise. So by putting a coloured ground on, it uh, avoids that problem. I've just blocked in some of the uh, areas on the bridge that's catching some light. It's dappled light coming through the trees. Very pale, almost white in some areas. And of course it's shining on some of these stones, producing a lovely pattern. And I'm just blocking it in now while I remember it, because it'll be gone again in... <laughs> five or ten minutes so while the Sun is still shining on us I'm uh, blocking in these areas to remind me and even though it may change this is important working out of doors a la prima like this I know now that the dappled light coming across from this tree on the right for instance shines down across the bridge like this it gives me a direction and it's going to stay there, even though the sun is going to change and go round. I'm going to stick with this. And this is what you have to do when you're working out of doors. You have to just go with it. Go with the flow. Back to a slightly browner uh, grey. Adding a little burnt sienna into the mix. Warming the stone up. I'm going to continue just blocking in other parts of this bridge. This is an area that I know very well. I used to come up here as a child and I'm, I'm very privileged to have this on my doorstep. These lovely um, Dartmoor rivers. This is the Tavy, And it's an area that I used to come and play when I was a child. My first set of paintings ever that I did were of this bridge. Longer ago now than I like to remember. The colour of this river is stained by the peat coming down off the moors and it's brown. It, it's a very, very difficult colour to, to get accurately. I'm going to start off with burnt sienna and a fair dollop of cadmium red. It's a warm, orangey kind of a, a brown. I might even have, have to put a slice of lemon yellow in there. There we go, I think I'll we'll start with that. It doesn't look quite right, but it's going to block in my my, my colour under the bridge and then I'll be able to put in on top my reflections. It's a very dark tea colour really, this, this uh, water, when viewed from a distance. I've added a little lemon yellow into the uh, this brown colour. It, it wasn't quite panning out the way I wanted, 
but I think this will help. And we're looking for a dark-ish color under the bridge. And bringing the strokes of the brush down will give me that, that sort of reflection under the bridge of the archway, which is visible, it's broken, but if I half close my eyes and squint, I can actually see in this river the reflection of the arch. And an interesting thing with reflections, they don't actually duplicate what we see. Um, reflections under bridges is the water's eye view of the bridge. From the water level, not from looking on a bank. So the view that I'm getting is the reflection is actually coming down something like that. And obviously we've got the current, the water is making ripples and these lovely lines, flowing lines 